Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with the Damn Fancy Creations, and today we're going to be doing another scoop tumbler tutorial. I love how this one turned out. It is a Rocky Road themed tumbler, and I'm going to be using different molds that I have to make the little pieces like the marshmallows that go in the scoops. And that is one reason why I like making the scoop tumblers is because I have all these molds from when I used to make dessert themed wax melts and they have just been kind of sitting places and I haven't been able to use them. But now I'm able to put epoxy in them and add them to my scoops. So I get to kind of revisit that time before I even did tumblers and it just kind of brings me back to when I kind of first got started doing this business, um, kind of where it all started. So Rocky Road is my mom's favorite ice cream and I really like the fact that you can, you know, play with quotes about a rocky road or things like that. So I decided to make one. I really love how it turned out. If you guys are ready to see how I make my rocky road themed ice cream tumbler, let's get started. If you guys are new to my channel, I will let you guys know that I prep and spray paint all of my tumblers with a flat white spray paint. This ensures that whatever color we are base coating will be brighter and more of a true color. So for this tumbler, I used the copper metallic. And once we get that color on there and it is dry, we are just going to apply a very thin layer of epoxy to the entire tumbler. Make sure when you do the bottoms of your cup, you are being a little bit sparing. We don't want any globs of epoxy on the bottom, which can cause the cup to sit unevenly. And I will go around and smooth out the epoxy. I typically smooth it from bottom to top. It just kind of helps smooth out any ripples. Um, and it also makes sure that every part of the tumbler is covered with epoxy. You will obviously hit it with your torch to pop all of the bubbles. I prefer a torch over a heat gun. A heat gun is really just going to heat your epoxy and could possibly make it a little bit too warm um, and cause the epoxy to move around, which is not what we want. The torch gets really, really hot, so it pops bubbles really well and really quickly. I did have a few other cups to pop bubbles on, so y'all just get to watch me do that for a second. Sometimes if I do a spray painted tumbler, I will go around the cup a couple times with a torch because bubbles tend to be a little bit more visible on spray paint than on glitter. So for our champagne swirl, I am just going to tap glitter from bottom to top as the cup spins. And then I will do it on the opposite side. So we have the glitter falling to the right side of the cup and the left side, which helps start that gradient that is what we're looking for. I did not want a harsh line of glitter. I wanted it to have a gradient or ombre effect. And don't forget to get your bottoms when you do swirls. We want our bottoms to be pretty too. I am going to add a little bit of Americano from Peachy Olive to this one. The first color was Mimosa from the Drunk Flamingo. Americano is very similar to this, but it does have um, some little opal pieces in it. So it gives it a little bit more color than just the champagne. And once this epoxy cures, we are going to come back and add another layer of epoxy on top. So 
When we apply our next layer of epoxy, I do a pretty thick layer, not super thick, but definitely not thin because I want to make sure that all of that glitter gets covered really well. And I am applying it the same way I did before, just from top to bottom, and then I will go back and smooth it out from bottom to top. And we're doing the same thing, being very sparing with the epoxy on the bottom. Even though there is glitter on it now, we still don't want any globs of epoxy on the bottom of the cup. And then just like before, we are going to take our torch and pop all of those bubbles. And once this layer of epoxy dries, we will be ready to decal. So after one layer of epoxy, this one is pretty smooth. If you need to sand any pieces, you can definitely do that. So now we're going to apply our vinyl. I love this holographic pink vinyl. It is a newer color that my supplier um, got in. I will link my supplier's website in the description. It is a holographic pink. I don't even know what name they call it. I just picked it up the last time I was there and I love it and should have bought every sheet that they have because I've used it for so many cups ever since I got it and now I'm out. So with our leopard print, I am just going to apply it directly onto the bronze part of the cup. I really like how this vinyl looked on the bronze. In the video, it looks a little bit more holographic than it is in person. Um, if it's in the sunlight, it is definitely holographic, but if it's in natural light, it doesn't look quite as holographic. But I am just going to apply this sparingly. Um, I did print different pieces, some of the larger pieces of leopard and then some of the little smaller pieces and I'm just kind of going to stagger how I apply them And there's no right or wrong way how to do this. So this is your cup. You apply the vinyl how you want to apply it. If you want smaller and more pieces of leopard print, you can definitely do that. If you want larger pieces than I made mine, then you can do that as well. Um, I want to say that my largest leopard spot was about one, maybe one and a half inches. And then all of the other ones were smaller than that. And once I get the bulk of the leopard spots on, I will go back and apply a few little scattered pieces along the edges of where the leopard print is just so it's not such a straight leopard print line i did overlap some of these leopard print spots onto the champagne vinyl or sorry the champagne glitter that we applied to the cup And the more I was applying this vinyl, the more I was loving how this cup was turning out. This one is probably my favorite scoop cup that I've done because I just love the base cup so much and the scoops just kind of tied everything together. So this is where you guys can see that I'm overlapping that vinyl onto the glitter a little bit just so it ties both parts of the cup together.
And just in case you're wondering, I think I printed a section about five inches by 12 inches of leopard spot and I did pretty much use all of them. Or it may have been four inches by 12 inches. Once we have all of our leopard spots on the tumbler, we are going to put it back on the turner for another clear layer of epoxy. So this is just a clear layer of epoxy. It's not super thick. We are just applying this to cover our vinyl so that we can apply our Milky Way design. I am applying a clear layer of epoxy before I do the Milky Way because I don't want to burn my vinyl when I try to move the Milky Way swirls with my torch and I don't want any of the Milky Way design to get interfered with by the vinyl that's on there or get hung up by the vinyl. So this way when we go to apply our Milky Way design we have a smooth surface to start with Again, we are being very sparing with epoxy on the bottom of our tumbler and smoothing it out from bottom to top. And then we will grab our torch and pop all of those bubbles. If you do not have the large torch yet, I definitely recommend getting it. It was a game changer when I got mine. So now that this layer of epoxy has cured, we are going to go back with a, another layer of clear epoxy and we are going to apply our Milky Way design. I will start by applying this the same way as always, just smoothing it out from top to bottom and then one more time from bottom to top so that we have a smooth surface to start with. And for the actual Milky Way, we are going to use white armor art that we have mixed in to a small amount of epoxy. With the white armor art, you do not need a lot. A little goes a very long way. So you don't want to overwhelm the cup with white. You just want to have enough on there to give you some cells. We are also going to be using the bronze armor art. The bronze is not quite as um, bright or consuming as the white is, so you don't have to be as careful with how much you apply to the cup. So when I do my Milky Ways, I will apply a thin line from bottom to top where I want my swirls to be. And in this case, I want it between the glitter and the spray paint. And then I will take my little silicone spatula and just smooth out the lines. I am not using a lot of pressure. I am really just placing the spatula where the white lines are and letting the motion of the cup just move the spatula as it turns. If you put too much pressure, then you will take off the epoxy, the, the, just the regular clear epoxy and the white, which is not what we want. And then we're going to go back and do the same thing with the bronze mixture. Both of these, the bronze and white armor art, you can find on the Counter Culture website that will also be linked in the description. And we're going to do the same thing, just let our spatula kind of drag through the epoxy. And after you do this, you will start to see some cells form. But what really makes the cells form is hitting it with your torch. The torch just helps everything spread out and helps those little tiny cells form. You do have to be careful. You don't want to apply too much heat and let your epoxy get too liquidy because then it will cause all sorts of funny swirls that you don't want. 
I just kind of hit a few sections and then pull my torch back, hit a couple more sections, pull my torch back. You can always go back and hit it with the torch again, but once you get it too warm, it is a little hard to kind of correct it. And if you see any funny areas forming, you can kind of smooth it out with your spatula again. And once that layer of epoxy has cured, we are ready for our quote. I love how this tumbler is turning out. I hope you guys do too. But you guys can see how the little cells are forming, or formed, I shall say. I also went around and smoothed out my edges, my top rims and bottom rims. If you need to see how I do that, I will link a video now so you guys can check that out. And of course, if there are any little things that you need to smooth out on the cup, then you do need to do that now with your sanding block. Just make sure everything is really, really smooth. And here is the quote we're going to be using. Rocky roads often lead to beautiful destinations. I thought it was a fitting quote for our Rocky Road Tumblr. And I do always use transfer tape with lines on it. I think it helps keep everything really straight and helps me apply it to my tumbler as straight as I can get it. Sorry, my shoulder is in the way. <laughs> Sometimes with larger quotes, I do try to do it in sections. So I will put the backing of the vinyl underneath the bottom part of the text just so it doesn't stick and I can kind of easily remove one word at a time. Sometimes when you, you know, are pulling off vinyl, it gets a little crooked. So I find it, um, if I apply it in one word or two words at a time, it kind of helps everything stay straight. So I will just smooth on one or two words and then peel it up and then kind of move down to the next section. Sometimes they line up really easily. Sometimes it takes some work. <laughs> so then we're going to make sure everything is smoothed down and stuck to the transfer tape really well. And now we're going to apply it to our tumbler. And I decided that I wanted my quote in between the leopard print and the glitter. That way you could see both sections of the tumbler. So I will just press it down in the center and then smooth one side out and then smooth the other side out. and then peel it off very carefully. So now that our vinyl is on, we will put this back on the turner for another layer of epoxy to seal in all of that vinyl, and then we will apply our drips. So here is what our cup looks, all shiny and pretty after the last layer of epoxy. And now we are ready to apply our chocolate drips. This epoxy has been sitting for quite a while. I will typically use nice and thick from counterculture to apply my drips um, to get it to the thickness that I want. But I did have a lot of things to do this day. So I just mixed some epoxy and let it sit for about an hour. You guys can see how thick my epoxy is. It is pretty much like a super thick molasses. This is how I like my mixture when I apply my drips. 
you guys can see that it is barely moving at all. This way I have a lot of control over where my drips go and I am not having to babysit it. So even if I use nice and thick, I will still get my mixture to be this thick. And when I apply it, I just take a big glob and run it along the top edge of my cup. And I typically speed this part up in my videos, but I am just letting you guys see this in real time so you can see how thick my epoxy mixture is. Because I promise when you think that it's thick enough that you're not going to have to babysit your drips you need to let it thicken more. <laughs> I have done that several times where I think, okay, this is thick enough. It's not going to drip. And then I'm like, man, I should have waited another 10 minutes for it to get a little bit thicker because this epoxy will still fall. So once I have my top rim of my tumbler coated with a decently thick layer of epoxy. I will get small little globs on my popsicle stick and I will look to where the drips are naturally starting to form and that is where I will put um, this glob of epoxy so that the natural forming drip will continue to fall. And then I will just kind of smooth it out so that it doesn't look kind of awkwardly placed there. And if you want your drips to fall more, then you will need to add a larger drop of epoxy. And if you want your drips to just be a little small, then you just need to add a really small dab of epoxy. <laughs> And I will tell you guys a, a trick, <laughs> like some of these drips, you know, they look kind of funny when you put it on because the epoxy is so thick, but you can take your torch and hit the drips with your torch, which I do anyway to pop any little bubbles. But we all know that epoxy starts to get a little bit more liquidy once it warms up. So if you hit these with your torch, it will kind of smooth everything out and help the drips fall a little bit more if you need them to. So you are basically going to do this all the way around your cup. Just find where the drips are forming or if there are no drips that are starting to form, you can just put a drip there and kind of smooth it out and the epoxy will start to fall. So I went and grabbed my torch. So I will just turn it on pretty low and just kind of run it along the rim of the tumbler, pop those bubbles, help those drips fall a little bit. But because the epoxy is so thick, we do not need to sit and babysit it. And if you wanted to add sprinkles or things like that, you would add them now. And once this epoxy is cured, we are going to add one final layer of epoxy just to make sure the drips and everything is sealed in really good and attached to the tumbler. 
There was a little spot up here that was a little thin, so I did go back and just kind of smooth it out. So you guys can see that these drips are not falling quickly at all, but everything is smoothed out from us hitting it with the torch. I did see a couple more little air bubbles popping up. So I was just quickly hitting it with the torch. And this is pretty much it for the tumbler itself. We will add our final layer of epoxy and it will be ready to go. And then it is time to get ready on the scoops for this tumbler. So if you guys have not seen my scoops, this is what they look like. Just three scoops of ice cream is typically what I do. We are going to be using Poxy Sculpt from CCDIY. We're going to need some Pam, and you will definitely need some gloves. I am just using acrylic paint for these scoops. I typically use dispersion colors. I think they are the best colorant for Poxy Sculpt, but I do not have brown for these chocolate scoops, so I just had to settle for acrylic paint. So for my scoops, I will place one part in my scoop equivalent to what one and a half scoops would be. And then I will measure out the same size of scoop or ball in the other part. So we need equal parts of A and B. Your sizes will vary depending on what size scoop you use. Obviously, if you're using a smaller scoop, then you will need to measure more. If you're using a larger scoop, you will need to um, measure less. I am not sure what size scoop this is. It's a medium size ice cream scoop, I guess. I don't know. But once you have your equal sized pieces, we are just going to mix it together. I have found that if you fold it in, if you fold the outside to the middle, it seems to mix a little bit better. So we're not squishing it all together. We're actually folding it together. That reminds me of the Schitt's Creek episode where they're trying to fold in the cheese. Uh, I love that show. Anyway, so once we are mixing this and you can kind of tell when everything is mixed well. The parts, even though they're both white, one is a little bit more of a creamy white and one is a little bit bright white. Um, and you can see the different parts when you're mixing it together. So once you can't tell the difference between the bright white and the creamy white, we can go ahead and add our colorant, which today is just acrylic paint and you just continue to fold it in. When you add your colorant, especially if it's liquid, this is where it tends to get a little bit sticky, which is why I like to fold the mixture versus squishing it up between my fingers because it will stick. And I did not want this to be like a um, super dark brown. I kind of wanted you to see some of the white striations that the Poxy Sculpt already has because with Rocky Road ice cream you kind of see those swirls of marshmallows throughout the ice cream so I wanted to get that same effect. So we're just kind of pulling it like taffy <laughs> to help create those white lines and darker brown lines. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but you can kind of tell that some parts are still a little white.
and I will spray my ice cream scoop with Pam. I have found that if you spray your scooper with Pam or any kind of like cooking spray, then it does help the epoxy sculpt release a lot easier. And you are basically going to scoop <laughs> and press it down on the aluminum foil and very slowly pull the trigger. My this particular ice cream cream scoop is kind of fickle. If I pull it too hard, then it all gets messed up. So I have to be really careful. I do have another scoop that works a lot better, but it is larger. So I cannot use it for this particular ice cream scoop. So for our second scoop, we are going to lightly press it down on top of the first scoop. You don't want to press it too hard and flatten out the first scoop too much. We still want the original scoop to look like an ice cream scoop <laughs> and not flat. So see, my ice cream scoop got messed up already. The track kind of gets off and I have to fix it. And I will spray it one more time. Sometimes I don't need as much spray, but if it has a lot of colorant in it and it's really sticky, then I will spray it every time. And for our third scoop, we are going to press it down lightly in between the original two scoops. I did have a little bit left over, so I made a small donut with it. <laughs> so there is our chocolate ice cream. And if you need to smooth out some little parts, you can, um, I typically just kind of leave mine how they are. If you press down the little parts too much, then it doesn't look as realistic. So you want to make sure that you're not making everything so smooth just because real ice cream doesn't look like that. So now it's time to add our marshmallows and chocolate pieces. These are my marshmallows. I have a mold that I use for epoxy for the marshmallows and the chocolate. Um, these are molds that I have had for years, so I don't have a link to them, but you can search on Etsy or Amazon and find some. And I am really just taking my pieces and pressing them down into the epoxy sculpt ice cream. I always drill my straw hole in the original scoop that we scooped out, so I am careful not to place the sprinkles, marshmallows, chocolate where the straw hole would go. Because you don't want to drill your straw hole and then drill your marshmallows or sprinkles or whatever else you have on top. And since Poxy Sculpt is epoxy, the epoxied marshmallows and chocolate form to it really well. And if you guys have not worked with Poxy Sculpt before, you do not need to seal it since it is a two part sculpting epoxy. Once it cures, it is just like regular epoxy, it is waterproof. I have tried to break it with my hands and I cannot break it. So it is very durable and a good product to use for designs like this. And this is basically it for our scoops. 
We can go back and add some chocolate syrup if you want to. This is uh, what it looks like after I added my chocolate syrup. I forgot to film that part, but it's super easy. I just drizzled some a thickened epoxy over the scoops and let it cure. So for our straw hole, I basically hold our lid up to the bottom of the scoop and kind of figure out where I want my straw hole to go. And then I will mark that spot with a marker or a pen or whatever you have on hand. If it will mark. <laughs> It would not reach. And I take the largest bit that I have. I believe it's three eighths. And I'm going to drill straight through the scoop. I do not drill it at an angle because then our straw is not going to sit correctly. which this is also why I do not make my hole while the epoxy sculpt is still wet because I want to make sure that the hole in the epoxy sculpt and the hole in our tumbler lid line up perfectly. You don't want to make this awesome scoop and awesome tumbler and then the topper sit funny on top of the tumbler. And once I drill my hole, I always test it out with the straw just to make sure that everything will sit nice once it's connected. And now it's time to add the magnets onto the lid. I use 10 by five millimeters and 10 by three millimeters. You guys can see the difference here. I use both sizes because sometimes I need a little bit more height depending on what lid I use. And for these, I will score the lid just because the plastic on the lid is very slick. So I wanna make sure that when we epoxy the magnets on it will have something to grab onto. So I will just take my blade and score it. I will show you guys what it looks like. I will do this on both sides where our magnets are gonna go. So you guys can see the score marks. We're just going to do that right where our magnets are going to go. So this is epoxy that I mixed up. I am just going to show you guys how I did both of these. <laughs> I had two scoop cups to do, so I just filmed them both. I typically wait for my epoxy to thicken up a little bit before I add it to the tumbler lid. This one was a little bit more liquidy than I would like. But you just need a small dab of epoxy. just to hold the magnets on. Okay. 
So we are going to take one set of magnets and apply it to these drops of epoxy that we just put on the tumbler lid. I needed a little bit more on this one side. I like to make sure that the magnets are really, really sealed in. And then we will do the same thing with the other lid. And before we add the magnets to the bottom of the topper, we will let this epoxy cure. So once the epoxy for the lid magnets has cured, we are ready to apply the magnets for the bottom of the topper. So you will stack another magnet on top of the magnets that are already on the lid. So now we have two magnets and we are going to put another small drop of epoxy on top of these magnets. You don't wanna to add too much epoxy because we don't want it squishing out and falling over both of the magnets and then the magnets will be epoxied together. <laughs> So this is obviously a different topper, but this is just to show you guys how I do this. So we are going to take our lid, put it on the tumbler, or you can use a blank tumbler if you want. Put a straw through the topper, and then put that through the tumbler lid and set the topper down onto the magnets that have epoxy on top. So once this cures, you can remove the topper. There will be two magnets attached to the tumbler lid and two magnets attached to the ice cream topper. So once all of this is cured, I'm going to show you guys what I do sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you guys can see that there's not really a whole lot of epoxy on these magnets. So I will take just a small drop and go around the magnets with another thin layer of epoxy just to make sure that nothing is going to come off. We don't want to send these out to customers and then them say that a magnet popped off. So I just like to make sure that everything is sealed in really, really well. And that is all for the toppers. Once this is cured, I will put it all together and it will be ready to show. Here are some finished pictures of how this turned out. I love how it looks, all the rose gold, bronze, champagne colors, and the vinyl. I just think it turned out perfectly. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and answered any of your questions if you had any on how to do scoop cups. If you guys enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my Facebook group that is linked in the description. Thanks for watching.